All right. Um, I want to go back into um, the story about the first night uh, that the, they tried to kill me and why I know it was the government, okay, and why the government even did it. I made another video about this, but it got really elaborate, and I didn't get, you know, because there was a lot of um, assassination attempts that followed, but I may have triggered those myself, and I'll get into that in a later part of the video, but I, but I want to go ahead and explain to you more succinctly, get to the point more quickly that very first night in that assassination attempt. Now, what I want to say is this. I had a feeling that I needed to start carrying a gun on me, you know? And I've done enough research on, you know, the, the combat arts and the martial arts and stuff to know that if a thought crosses your mind that deals with your own self-defense, just go with it. I mean, at the end of the day, what's it going to cost you? Uh, but not doing it might cost you your life. So I just, I just go with it. Spontaneously, you may think it's crazy. It does not matter to me. Because I've seen a lot of people get killed and stuff and over this information shit and I just don't care anymore. And I'll get into that too. But, um, well, to start off, that is kind of what I want to get into to start off. I, I had these people that I was acquainted with uh, back whenever uh, I came across the report on the $3.5 trillion that got set private and being one of seven people to be able to document it and then having done it. And um, and then there was a lot of fallout over that and a lot of censorship and a lot of really, really over-the-top censorship. They even shut down YouTube, and I went and called into Alex Jones' show, spoke in front of millions of people about it. They weren't even going to let me call in because they weren't even going to let me on the air because that guy had just shot 80 kids, 77 kids in Norway, and they said, we're talking about this. I said, no, we're going to talk about this. Now put me on the fucking air. And they did. They go, okay, hold on a second. And they came back and put me on the air. So the point of the story is this. It's just whenever all that happened, whenever those people died, they were... There was, this, there was all these things that this guy was doing to kind of indicate that something wasn't right right before he died and um, those things were stuff like you know sweaty sweating being really pale um, I showed up at his house uh, at his apartment one night to well I was actually buying weed from him and um, he uh, his face was just really really pasty he had sweat coming off of him he was pale and his eyes were just very very frantic and um, frantic and uh, shifting you know around he was just very very nervous and whenever I started to uh, have that experience myself I knew that there was something to it. I knew that it was something instinctual. Now, back to whenever I said I got that feeling to start carrying a gun around me, I got on the internet the next day and found out that the Acacia Strain had just released a song about me. And it was demeaning, you know, as, as well as everything else they've done, because, as they said, they are wolves in sheep's clothing. They admit to, be, to being wolves in sheep's clothing. They actually said in their lyrics, and they didn't even come out and say it, you know, because if a person just came out and said it, but if they said it metaphorically, you'd kind of believe them, well, well they did. <laughs> and so, what I'm trying to say is this, um, that, that song was talking about a lot of stuff about, you know, you've realized all these things, and, um, uh, you know, trying to make me commit suicide. It was the song Sensory Deprivation, they're trying to get me to commit suicide because they just want to rub my nose and all the frustration that's just piling up and ruining me and they just want to make it worse and all it did was just took it all away because I was like geez you're right you know that I mean look how I'm acting over this shit you know and uh but that wasn't what they wanted at all they, that was the opposite of what they wanted you can bet your fucking sweet ass okay and they will say that they did it to help me 
you bet your sweet ass that too because there's nothing off the books with these people their minds are operating frantically their minds are operating frenetically to come up with every little thing that they can do push every little button you know and I just don't have the time to do it, but I could actually sit there and tell you exactly what they're going to say next. I mean, it's just too obvious. It's too fucking simply understood. I'm just sorry. It's too easy to understand this shit. And so, what they're trying to do is to get... <clears throat> so, what they're, what they're doing, I don't know what they're trying to do. Well, I know what they're trying to do, but it served another purpose. It, it brought attention to the fact that I've realized something important. And then there was a little research done on behalf of the government, and and it was like, okay, yeah, that'll change things. Let's go ahead and kill this guy. Because there was attention on it, but not the kind of unified attention that that they can bring, you know, with their audience and all that, you know, going to the top of the hard rock charts and all this shit, Um, and just being Jewish, you know, schemers that, of course, get promoted a little more than everybody else because because of what they're into and what they do. So, you know, from New York City. And, or, you know, living in New York City. So, anyways, point of the story is this. Um, they, um, they made that song, and, and so that was the effect of it. And I started to get that fucking feeling that night. I was just like, palms started sweating. My heart rate started to get higher you know, but I hadn't done any cocaine, you know, I mean, my heart was racing like I was on cocaine, but I had done no cocaine at all, okay, I knew that somebody, something was about to come down on my ass, and I could just feel people that were onlookers, like some of these younger actors and stuff, some of these people in Hollywood that are just like 22, 25, something, you know, they're seedy enough, and they're from seedy enough bloodlines and stuff to know exactly what's going on, but they're innocent enough to feel sorry for it and kind of wonder why does it have to be this way and wish that it didn't. And I could feel some of them just shutting their eyes and just trying to pray like to me, like trying to telepathically like send that message, like shutting their eyes, flinching their eyes hard and just be like, come on, hear me, hear me, hear me. You know, get ready, get ready now, get ready now, get ready now. This fucking message going through my mind over and over again, like Jesus, you know, a trapped rat. A trapped rat. That's what I knew I was at that moment. I could see his eyes in my, in my mind. And he was going, get out of there now. Get out of there now. 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 And it was just frantic. You know, just get out of there now. Just get out of there now. Just get out of there now. Just get out. And I could just feel it, man, bearing down on me. Man, bearing down on me. Bad. I can't explain to you that feeling. It was very bad. Okay. Because I could feel what they felt. The helplessness they felt for me and then being me, you know, <clears throat> feeling it for myself through them. It was just a weird experience. But I, but this was, you know, before I really developed my skill set for just never being killed. And this is kind of how I developed it. And, and it sucks that people had to die for me to understand how to do this, but they did. But, you know, by now I've just gotten better and better at it. It's just incredible, I, you know but I wouldn't want you to go and try it, you know, it's just like, you've got to live through really crazy shit, like, you got to be the one person that we can't kill, but we got to kill these people to shut you up right now, you know what I mean, and, and you can't ever just become that guy unless you just step into the world's biggest pile of dog shit on accident, I'm telling you, you don't want to step in it, you're not going to do that on purpose, I promise you, I fucking promise your ass, now look at me, look what the fuck I've been put through over the shit, now I gotta kill people. Anyways, point of the stand, I already know who they are, who I'm gonna fucking murder. And I'm, a lot of these motherfuckers, I'm just gonna be like taking a bunch of fucking, uh, you know, homemade fucking explosives and flying that fucking airplane right into your fucking uh, NSA facility. And we can all fucking go up and fucking one big fucking explosion for all the fuck I care. You know, we can just have it. You stupid motherfuckers. Yeah, you're gonna get it fucking just get your sweet ass ready. You ain't fucking known shit about my ass. You gotta look up my criminal record, dude. Fucking seriously, I put a gun in somebody's fucking face just for stealing 50 fucking dollars from me. And it wasn't because they stole 50 dollars from me. It was over the drug war. And, but still, you need to understand that once you go down that road with me, 
I swear to God, I will find a way to kill you if I get a chance. I swear to God. I swear to God, eventually I'll find a way to kill you. Because that's, that's how I ended up at that motherfucker's house. I started driving around. I found the first dude who I thought might know where he was at and bribed him with money I didn't even have to show me where the motherfucker was. You see what I mean? I mean, I just will find a fucking way. I'm just saying. I ain't what you fucking thought. I promise you that. But I got to get on to the subject of this video. Uh, so, what happened was, I was sitting in the back, and when I was sitting back there, so I just, I sat there after my heart started racing, I, I shut my eyes and I sat down, and I just knew something bad was about to happen, man, and I don't pray that much, but the last couple times I've really sat down and prayed, this is, was one of them, and the other was when I watched people go through my house. Actually, I did start praying. Uh, I was watching them go through my house trying to find me to kill me. But anyways, the point of the story is this, and I don't want to go through that. That didn't have anything to do with the government. That was over this, and I ended up trying to hire the mob to kill somebody for me, and then things got fucked up, and they tried to kill me. Anyways, look, the point of the story is this, because I just flipped out. I have been putting this shit, suppressing this shit for too long. I've just went into the mob and said, I'm going to blow all your fucking brains out if you don't fucking kill this motherfucker. It was just suppressed shit, you know? And, um, and then I ended up trying to apologize and it was too late and they fucking tried to kill me for days on end. I don't understand why y'all had to do that. Why can't you just fucking get the, no, you ain't never experienced some shit like this before. And no, you ain't never going to fucking just blow up over some shit like this. I don't understand what the fuck you motherfuckers have wrong with you any fucking ways. Cause you should have fucking let me off once I fucking apologize. It fucking pisses me off. And another thing too, you know. <clears throat> my mom's life's been put on fucking notice. My fucking girl's life's been put on notice by people who admit to be wolves in sheep's clothing, calling out random facts of my life, and then fucking threatening my life, and then fucking all this, and then they and somebody tried to kill me over you know over something they said. So I was just worried. You fucking need to overlook this shit. Anyways, I ain't gonna talk to y'all no more. I've got something else to say. Here. Look, point of the story is this. So <clears throat> basically. I went, I sat there and I, I've had that feeling and I said, I said, please, something help me. I don't know what's going on. And it just said, Tanner, it was a calm voice. It must have been just something trying to calm me down. I don't know. It just calm came over me and it just said, go to the back, go down by the creek and just hang out for a while. I was like, damn, that sounds like some crazy advice for the way I'm feeling right now. So I went down there with my gun pointed up towards the fence. I didn't just go down there and hang out for a while. And when I got down there, <clears throat> it wasn't but about maybe two or three minutes had passed. And all of a sudden I heard that window break. But it didn't just break. It didn't It didn't sound like a shatter, you know? It didn't sound like somebody had thrown a rock through it or something. It sounded like somebody had taken a crowbar right in the dead center of it and put a huge amount of weight on it all at once. So it just broke right down the middle from the top to the bottom like dead like just a straight crack that just went straight up and down and whenever it cracked you could just hear it reverberating you know and the two pieces uh, reverberating off of each other and it didn't even last but for a second it was just bang. I mean that was it but you could tell it was a broken glass you know and I don't know how the fuck they did it man I don't know what they do you know uh, I think they got some kind of device that that goes right in the dead center. And then they have suction cups that goes on the window. And then whenever they pop it, or maybe they, maybe they you know, they kind of uh, like uh, perforate, not perforate it, but like they take a piece of, they take like a glass cutter and just go right from top to bottom with the glass cutter. So it's sure to break where they want it to. And then whenever it does break, it's from that pressure that they applied to it. Some kind of fucked up device they've created. And whenever it breaks, it just breaks right in that one spot and then it reverberates. And it doesn't even reverberate but for a second because those sound waves are canceling each other out. And that's exactly what the fuck I heard. And I don't know, how, do, how would I even know what that sounds like or what that would sound like unless I heard it, you know? And, and, and who the hell has ever experienced something like that, you know? I mean, I heard the neighbors were like, what was that? It didn't even sound like a... You could tell it was a glass breaking, but it wasn't... It wasn't 
like a it wasn't like any type of glass breaking I've ever ever heard before in my entire life okay there was something fucked up about that and just so you know that's what I think and I I know it was the government because I had not crossed anyone um all the others could have been the government too but uh you know I hadn't crossed anyone you know what I mean and it was just I I already know exactly what it was because I had a catty cornered house and another thing too I could have swore I heard the neighbors whenever I came outside I could have swore I heard the neighbors saying oh he's on that Krav Maga shit I swear because those neighbors were cops the neighbors across the street from me were cops the house almost looked too good to be true we had tried to buy several houses and this one was just a really unique story um, the woman, her husband had supposedly died and she had to let go of it for less money than what she was and she was for sure going to take less if we offered it and <clears throat> we didn't rip her off or anything but you know, we got a good deal on it um, <clears throat> but you know um, it's just it's just the fact that that house was uh, a corner lot. There was no, I had no neighbors to my left. There was only neighbors to my right. And I had a, a green belt backing up behind me. And to my left, there was green belt that extended down for about another few hundred yards. Or at least 150, 200, 300 yards. So, you know, the people who did that <clears throat> did so with the intention of killing me and uh, knowing that I probably had a gun but you know we're going to come in there with some really weird shit and um, the neighbors already know it's all set up it's just like when Martin Luther King got assassinated you know all the only cop who didn't come to work that day was um, the only cop who didn't come to work that day was the black cop so it's not a new thing for cops to have deep, deep uh, foresight and involvement in high-level political assassinations. Okay? Now, I want to be clear with you about that. That's scary. Okay? And I'm, I'm uh, you know, I've been coming up with a storyline about cops that kill people and shit. And, but that's really going on to a certain extent, and really it is going on, period, to be honest with you. I mean, we don't know what they would have done with me. They made a uh, shot me with a tranquilizer, uh, tranquilizer dart and take me somewhere to fucking torture me, you know, and um, or maybe do some really weird shit, you know, because these are the kind of motherfuckers like the Acacia Strain talks about taking little kids into the desert. They like to take a helpless person who can't defend themselves and get satisfaction out of fucking them up to the point of death. It's not like me. Like if I was to do like something like that to somebody, I would have a good fucking reason for it. You know, I mean, I'm not saying I won't, but I'm saying I'm not just going to do it just to fucking show you that I'm the boss or something or like you messed up talking your mind around here or some shit like that. No, I like to take motherfuckers who think that way and do it to them. And no, you ain't never going to intimidate me with anything, stupid cunt. You motherfuckers better just keep trying because I swear to fucking God I'm going to fucking kill your ass, stupid ass bitch. You have no reason at all to stop now. So do, do not, do, do not stop now, okay? Because you have no reason to stop now. You have only a good reason to keep going, because I'm promising you right now, I'm going to fucking do the same fucking shit to your ass, dumbass bitch. All you motherfuckers are going to fucking be dead, and I swear to fucking God, you'll regret the fucking day you ever talked about my fucking ass. If you sat around and talked about my ass, you're dead. Okay, and get this fucking shit as much as much too, motherfucker. I'm gonna bury you in my fuck. I'm gonna bury you in my fucking yard, and let you fucking fertilize my fucking plants, bitch. That ain't the fucking beginning of it. I'm not just gonna fucking kill your bitch ass neither. I'm gonna kill your whole fucking family, and watch the regret well up in your eyes. You understand that? <clears throat> 